Let us uh, let us begin. I'd like to call the meeting with the South County Senior Center Board of Oversight uh, to order. Oh, wait a minute. Um, Hold on. We... Sorry. Oh. You know what I realized? Maybe need to record from that one. No, it's. Oh, oh, yeah. My apologies. Oh, it's not. Yeah. Give me one second. I'm sorry. Is the mic live? Hmm? Is the mic live? Yeah. Um, I think it will the be in mic will be, Yeah. I think uh, the mic is going to be on here. No, uh, but it's it live right now. Yes. It's just I need to give Poppy a second. Sorry. I thought she was. Yeah. It was plugged in. And Poppy's going to take over the meeting. Yeah. It just take over the camera on here. Should I'm not looking at this one pin that one. I'm trying to get it to to do it's not it's not loading. There we go. Okay. Sorry about that, guys. All right, great. You can see our beautiful bright background here at our center of location. <laughs> Great. And, and uh, give Jen that moment of uh doesn't there. See our see ourselves better. All right. So um we have to recall our meeting to order. Um I just wanted to uh, remind everybody of our guidelines, speak one at a time, respectful, considerate, courteous, concise, and one repetitive. Um, the members present, all members are present. Um, and we have uh, three discussion items here. I don't see us in minutes to, I don't see minutes or public comment. Do we There's have public comment on here under discussion items? But um, oh, it's a first of all. Oh, yeah, sorry. I um, the minutes weren't on here. I thought we could go under un unanticipated because um, we weren't sure if they would be done. But Chris, uh, we drew about them finished. Okay, okay. It's meeting. So okay, um, great, great. We'll do that then. I think that's the reason. Okay, sorry about that. Oh, I, yeah. was I didn't read the three discussion and she comes out. I'm the number of public comments. Yeah. So um, let me first ask: Is there a public comment on anything? That is not already on the agenda. Moving around the room, I don't see anybody raising their hands. I don't see anybody else on Zoom. So um, I'll take that to be uh, there's no public comment on things not on the agenda, but there might be the things that are on the agenda. All right, great. Um, the uh, second one, I think, is update item. I don't know, the Jen, the PBTA partnership update. Okay, so the last meeting that we had, um, Trevor had inquired about the MOU, which is the memorandum of understanding, et cetera. Um, I have been in touch with Paul Burns over at the PBTA over the past uh, week and a half, and um, we still don't have the finalized MOU, so we will not be starting the program this coming week. Okay. Um, we should have the draft, or we should have the version on hopefully Monday or Tuesday. Okay. So, um, the program will start, but MVP, who's one of the other partners, will be taking over the rides for the week because there is no separate MOU for us or Amherst COA at this okay. point. Um, but with that being said, um, how it was explained is it will differentiate. They will be covering everything. We will just be providing the driver. It will be a reimbursement grant. So okay. we will bill them for all of the costs associated. They are providing the vehicle um, and, you know, they cover the gas. It'll be gassed up and everything else right. because where it's going to be stored, it's at one of the PBTA sites. Um, in addition to this, I thought I would piggyback on that because this is a partnership. So there is a... Um, Remember how we got the grant for the new vehicle, for the new van, um, and we should actually hopefully get that next year, not in 2026. Um, some information that was on the original website was correct or change. Um, so one of the things that we're looking at is partnering with the PBTA um, for this grant for a 50% operations cost. So previously we had the service incentive grant that was through the EOEA through um, 
mass council on aging through MCOA. The EOEA is Executive Office of Elder Affairs. Um, that grant we had um, covered our, it covered fares, it covered salary of driver, it covered gas, it covered vehicle maintenance, that type of stuff. Well, this new grant that I'm looking at that would not be requesting a new vehicle, but we can, we can request a new vehicle. Um, this would be a partnership where the PVTA would basically receive the grant funds. We would work through them to participate and submit our expenses, but it would cover 50% or it would cover five hours of driving time to bridge the gap like we had been before with the service incentive grant. So if people wanted to go from Deerfield lately to Springfield or Point South, or from Sunderland to Point North, like we have been doing, um, they would give us a van, um, an older van, I think it's around the 2018, the PBTA would to use for this partnership. So we would use the vehicle. Um, I believe we would provide, um, we would cover the maintenance and other things, you know, with the vehicle for usage and stuff like that. I think big ticket items would be covered by them. We're still working on that. Basically, the van is a donation to us. So um, it would no longer be their vehicle. So what this would cover is all of the driver time, which meaning when we get those medical requests, whether Tom or Chris could do the driving time, we would have their salary covered because the state looks for a cash match. But administering this would be my cash match of my salary. So the town's already paying. So there's no additional cost. It would be already covered by what my salary is to basically administer behind the scenes, the paperwork, um, the reports and things like that, like I have been doing with the MCOA grant previously. So it would, it, it would be an additional task. It wouldn't be additional money. And it would actually save us money in our budget in the long run because that five hours or whatever time that would be used for drive time, we approximate five hours a week. Uh, could be less, could be more, but we would just get reimbursed for the salary of the driver time. Um, it would also cover, we could get reimbursed for gas, so fuel um, would also be something that we could get covered for us. But you're still getting a very old band. 2018, yeah. yeah. So, but ours is a 2011, so... Still, um, so this is instead of getting a brand nope, new van? This is, this is um, so what I'm looking to do is to write another grant. Uh, the grant cycle hasn't opened for the new vehicle yet. It opens later um, in the fall. Right now, this is to cover operations, so it would kind of be to replace the state grant that we have for transportation previously because we didn't get an additional state transportation grant because, um, number one... While there's a slight need, why there's a need for it, I felt like the needs assessment with the um, age of dementia friendly was more of a priority over that. Since we got the marketing grant, which was seventy five hundred, the needs assessment was twenty thousand dollars, and we're you know that's the partnership with UMass Boston in addition, um, because this one's also more inclusive of community um, partners and community members, stakeholders, not just older adults. So we. Um, we're actually in the process of reaching out to folks regarding all of that. So, um, and then we applied for the $25,000 grant to help um, pay for additional time for Tom. We did not receive that $25,000 grant, but there were over, you know, so many millions of dollars. So two of our three requests got funded, which was pretty good. Yeah. And um, we're actually able to fund a lot of Tom's time with the hybrid grant that we have between administrative time and you know, not administrative for program and stuff like that. So this would just actually help reduce our salary costs um, and give us a second vehicle, but I'm going to apply for another vehicle to trade this 2011 in. Mm -hmm. But the 2011 vehicle right now is starting to have issues with the lift. So mm -hmm. having a backup that's not working, this would, you know, this would help us a lot. Um, and it wouldn't start till next fiscal year, anyways. This is part of the program, so it would be for fiscal year 26. Uh, but that's where it would start. So there would be no additional cost to the town, it would just be an available um, expansion of transportation options because the partnership that we're looking at getting the MOU for 
um, is not guaranteed to go past fiscal 25 slash 26 because it's a it's an 18 month grant, but by the time they got everything, it's about 15 months. Um, and when we start, so it'll be going through. But the other thing is, is that this particular grant um, that I was talking about getting this, this the additional one from sub the SIG um, is a grant that's been funded continuously for the past eight years. And uh, Paul Burns from PBTA shared that because it's a unique situation going over the RTA borders, that these are the types of unique projects that the state is looking to fund because, um, you know, they can see the benefit. And if we just continue to collect the data, it might be something that we can expand more on later. Mm -hmm. And that's been something that I've been really um, able to do. Now, all of this conversation with the uh, transportation started just from our mass in motion projects, work groups, getting, you know, listening to the community members, our seniors, of uh, what their needs were and reaching out to both RTAs, having them come at separate times. Um, and, you know, this is where we've been able to elaborate to. Um, also for the, the replacement one, for the um, replacement of the state, I'm also speaking with um, two other COA directors who are actively under this uh, partnership every year. And so I'm going to utilize some of their information as to how they submitted their grant and go from there as well. But I just wanted to share that something that I would really like to do. Um, I would love a vote to support. You can bring that back to us when you have all the info. Um, it's just, well, it's to write the grant. So, um, you know, it's not guaranteed even if I submit. Um, it's just something that I think would really benefit us, but I can send you the grant and stuff like that. Um, the PBTA and I would be working on the grant together. It would be a joint submission, I think, through us and them, but, you know, I can get all of the other details covered out, but there would be no additional cost to the towns for this program. What I'm kind of hearing is that it would, um, I'm hearing, like, replacing another grant that we're Kind of relying on now a little bit. The SIG grant we're relying on a little bit now to be funding. The SIG grant some, ended. Ended. Okay. So we had. We uh, had. Yeah, yeah, we had depended on um, uh, the risk of a 2018 vehicle is certainly smaller than the risk of a 2011 vehicle. Mm -hmm. So we're reducing the risk, but it is a risk that if, you know the older vehicle there'll be something. So there is there's not zero risk, mm -hmm. but there is as you're pointing out. Zero cash outlay up front. Yes. And uh, potentially, if we were to get it, it's going to help fund some things that SIG used to fund, mm -hmm. um, which includes our awesome staff, which has made so many other things possible. Um, and uh, just acknowledging the risk, I think it, it seems like on balance it's going to be with us. I wouldn't have any hesitation on having it go forward on the grant application, especially because that's. That that's no commitment. If we were to find later that there's some hidden right. thing, but it doesn't sound like there is. Sounds mm -hmm. like you've researched it thoroughly. Yes, because the match piece that they would look for a cash match would be my time yes. doing yeah. all the administrative stuff. Like I would, like I did for the SIG grant, and I you know didn't get reimbursed for everything. Um, mm, yeah. And the other piece to this is I would still in the second grant apply for another vehicle to, to trade in this 2011. But the other benefit um, to this grant would be that vehicle would not be restricted for our use just to go through that transportation. We can use it to go to the Big E or go do other things. It's just we would not fill the grant for reimbursement for right. using it for those types of projects right. just for the medical transport or coming to program. And is there still, is there a, a, a huge need for the, I mean, are you finding that you're driving people to Springfield or Greenfield or stuff? Or? We've been getting those requests and sometimes because we only have one vehicle, we can't accommodate. So that has been an issue. We have turned people away. Um, and I think that increase is only going, or it's going to only increase because the dial ride program or on demand through the FRTA for Deerfield and Wheatley, those volunteer drivers do not have accessible vehicles. Mm -hmm. And most of the folks that need the transport 
are people who have a wheelchair or a walker or a scooter type situation. Um, so, you know, we're finding people like um, Valley neighbors can't transport folks like that either because they're limited to the volunteer oh, yes, vehicles. Um, and then down the line, um, you know, what I was looking to do is to apply for that other grant where we can, one, trade in the 2011 to get the new vehicle, um, brand new vehicle. And then we would have two brand new vehicles, a 2018 vehicle, and, you know, we would be building it from there. That's my long-term plan. So I would just like to know if, it, if you, I mean, whether you yeah. vote on it or just get verbal support about applying for the grant moving forward. Um, you know, so that way I can partner with the PBTA. Thank you. I'm going to change the motion to support the motion to support the issue of the Second. Okay. Any further discussion? Okay. Uh, all those in favor? All right. So we can Aye. That's aye. Okay. We got our support. Thank you. Yeah. Um, feasibility discussion. Yeah. So this is great. Um, I just got an email yesterday afternoon, so I printed it out this morning. Um, we had, I think we got about 37 surveys from the day of the event. Um, some folks who came for the um, focus group were not through the original process. So they um, gave their survey feedback after the fact. Um, but, uh, you know, three of the folks that are in the room today participated in the forum because um, we have Marion Sadowski, Linda Rowe, um, Fran York, and Carol Ryan in the space. And Carol came in for the first part for the open houses with the other three folks as well. Um, and this was the feedback that we got in the summary email, but since people watching online are not going to be able to see this. Um, the consensus seems to be South Deerfield, but there were plenty of folks that voted for Sunder Limit Week evenly. The, the tally during those initial discussions with folks on the site during the AM sessions was 11 voted for South Deerfield, five voted for Waitley, and three voted for Sunderland. However, consensus was on Waitley and South Deerfield after the focus groups. Um, we had seven people left to vote at the end of the focus groups, and five voted for Waitley, one voted for South Deerfield, and one was indecisive between South Deerfield and Waitley, and zero voted for Sunderland. Um, please note that we had equal members from each town represented. Three members mentioned they had switched their minds after the focus group. Uh, so even though they initially were looking at South Deerfield, they changed it to, uh, to the results that we just shared. Um, some items or comments that were made throughout the day that came up frequently. Can the current town hall be looked at as a potential location for the senior center? I believe that was referenced to South Carolina. Um, other, other person said money has gone into the congregational church. It would be a shame the third way. Sunderland is too remote. People want things to be more centrally located for all communities. Um, when the question was brought up about multiple buildings being used for the senior center, uh, Jennifer rebutted the idea with numerous concerns, which my concerns are mm -hmm. trying to balance out staffing. Um, if we have someone out, if we have multiple people out, how do we continue with programs at multiple yeah. locations? And obviously, if that was the best way to do it, Hadley would be doing it that way. Northampton would do it that right. way. Right. It's not the best way to do it. And, and it's, it's, very, it's too intensive on our staff. And then that's and having good staff who can work efficiently is really important to making it financially feasible. And also, yeah. one of the um, parts that were on the like, I I like and I do not like um, post that we had on yeah. the board was one is multiple locations. I don't know where the events are. So yeah. even though we may put it in the newsletter, um, like for for certain days misshared or misinformation is shared people get confused they come here or they go somewhere else where the event is not yeah um intergenerational programming came up um more conducive at this in south jerryville this there is some what could be more of a community center feel there is an opportunity traffic concerns didn't really come up at all which is surprising as it's usually an issue one way or another 
Crossing the river seemed like a mental block for older adults. People that lived close by wanted to be able to walk to the South Deerfield site, but there was no concern for other members of the communities that didn't live close by. So meaning the folks in South who said they wanted to walk in South Deerfield had no concerns that, hey, what about our Wheatley members? They can't walk. Or our Sunderland members, they can't walk. Um, so some folks shared they would like the center close to the senior housing in Deerfield, but we know that's not definitive right now at this point. Mm -hmm. Some folks shared Gary Lot parking is being improved and is an option for overflow parking at the South Deerfield site. But at the same time, um, I think you know there could be the potential for arguing over who's what parking is going on depending on events, et cetera. So Folks don't need exercise spaces because of the YMCA program. Yeah, so well, I'm not sure of how true it is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This is something I would share that would say that those folks who made these comments do not regularly come to our center yeah. because they don't know what's going on. Right. And to be honest, when I was here that day, those who had negative commentary about this project were people who had never been to the center, maybe once, um, okay. you know, for for a public yeah. forum or something, yeah. but they so they make them be the most well informed. Yes, voices. Um, okay. Men used to be more active when the church was the location, more of a social setting drew them in. Um, I would contradict that. I think the folks who've been coming would say that you know if we had a separate lounge space, social mm -hmm. space, no matter where we are, that would be more but welcoming. Too. Here, it's just hard to be social because we don't have a separate area for that. So if there's another class going on, some folks feel uncomfortable when they're talking over the other, but not that they're afraid they'll disturb or whatever. Lab space, very desirable. Mm -hmm. People want social spaces that don't necessarily have program killing women, which is wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, a cafe model was not desired so much. They didn't want to have to pay for food. <laughs> Lunch There's plenty of places we can go to. Pay. Yep. Right. Yeah. Lunch programs and meals are needed. Programs centered around food. <laughs> Lessons, <laughs> cooking classes. Since our Julia Child. Yeah. <laughs> um, people are tired of things not happening. A quote, mm -hmm. been there, done this sentiment to the feasibility study. As folks have mentioned, they've been part of a bunch of surveys and nothing ever yeah. happens. One big factor is which site is easier to develop as seniors clearly want something ASAP. Yeah, what I would say the survey, the survey is not a feasibility study, right? Yeah. But we need both. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I appreciate the sentiment of, <laughs> and I, but to make it actually happen, we've got to, and I really, I still have strong hopes for this feasibility study that help us sort something out that everybody can get behind. But it's clearly, looking at that, it's going to take some education. It's yeah. going to take people going to meetings and showing up and saying, hey, no, that's not true. And hey, no, that's not really true. What, this is what when, we need. Because there is clearly some um, misinformation sure. there. Um, but you know what? I was saying this to Trevor earlier. I have great faith in our communities when it comes to people have good information, they'll make good decisions. Mm -hmm. That's what I found is true in Waitley, mm -hmm. for sure. And I have no reason to think it's not true in Deerfield and Sunderland that when people kind of understand, hey, this is what we're trying to build, do you want it? <laughs> uh, and things like, uh, yes, we're already trying to operate out of three different locations. And it's not really working. Um, they, I mean, they, I think we can counter misinformation um, in the short term if we are organized. And uh, especially if uh, our seniors who are active and are knowledgeable about what's going on, come to meetings. If those folks are out there talking in the community as well and saying, hey, I know it seems like 12,000 square feet is or 15,000 square feet is a lot. But let me tell you why that's really a good idea. Let me tell you how come the why in the Greenfield is not the answer to the needs of seniors 
in Deerfield and Sunday. And uh, what is the reason why you think 6,000 square feet is all they need? Because if, if the reason is that's all you've ever had before, right? Then we have to say, then you're saying that all we've ever done before is or all we're ever going to be able to, right? And that's not has not been serving our seniors well. I don't know, probably since I moved to the area. <laughs> um, so I think that's we have to be honest, we're trying to do something better than what we've done before. Yeah. And there's there's going to be there's we may never change everybody's mind on this, but um, we uh, we've got to make the case for doing uh, a better job than what we've done in the past and at, just ask for what we need. Yeah. Maybe we can like, don't say no. And you think oh, yes. you just have to get out there, <laughs> get um, out there. and help make that case. Yeah. Um, and it, it doesn't have to necessarily focus just on the seniors. It may be that what we have in mind is something to serve uh, the seniors. But I think we can, we, I think the survey, hope when we get all that information back, is probably going to show that if we reach down at least a little bit in age, mm -hmm. then we'll have wider communities. Yeah. I, I, I think we really have to ask for what we need and we have to educate people about why we need it. And that's and so those comments are all none of them came as a surprise to yeah. me. Even the traffic answers, I don't think people are that concerned about oh park on the grass. Yeah. I mean around here, right? We park on the grass all the time. Um, people are more yeah. concerned about the traffic here on 116 turning yeah. into here. Yes, yes. You know, so. yeah, it's hard. Yeah, and, and, and also, I've come here how many million times? I still get to that place. Like, oh, here we're like, ready. We're yeah. like, if the trash can's not out there, I, I <laughs> miss it and I come around. Yeah, yeah. And you get a big backup, you know, a lot of times. Yeah, yeah. waiting yeah. Turn in. So, so, so I, I think, I think, I guess I, I'm, I'm not surprised, but um, in some ways, it's a little better. Like, there's less misinformation here than. I thought there could be, because um, you know people aren't always paying attention. Um, to me, the, the uh, yeah, the the most, and, and this is not it doesn't happen to be in this list. It kind of comes under the a lot of money has gone to church in recent years. It'd be a shame to throw it away. Is that there may be some lingering uh, ideas that folks have that as this has already been made. Yeah. on the senior center and that's people have said that they, yeah. they thought it was definitely going to either the south deerfield congregational church or the old or the current town hall when it moves to the 1888 building yeah so um you know folks have that perception that deerfield's already made their decision and that there is no further input or information necessary well, that's, you know yeah but, it, but it's but it's just have their opinions and that's where it comes from you know there's yeah. a lot of people have strong opinions in town that yeah they want to see what they want to see but yeah they don't make and it may be that some you know some committees were making that assumption yeah. and then people took that to mean oh that's a decision that right assumption. exactly and yeah and that's something that probably well, has to be yeah I mean, but because I, I think we made it really clear uh with your predecessor and mm -hmm. trevor and i at the meeting where we finally signed the letter to support the feasibility study. Yeah. I think we're not going to support it if it was just right. not going to consider science other than Absolutely. South Africa. Yeah. Um, so yeah. that was and and so people who didn't watch that Sutton's meeting might not right. that. That's true. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that seems to me um yeah that's something where we, we probably should actively seek to talk to those folks and let them know, hey, this is I understand you you may think this, but this yeah. is what, this is what we're doing. This is yeah. what we do. Yeah. But in as non-confrontational ways. Yeah, well. of course. Is yeah. is there a way I'm curious for either myself or you know Joyce as the chair could get on the agenda for the three towns to just give updates of what our conversations have been. That's a good idea. Like um, I said I think the sooner we can get together a meeting to talk about what we're doing with everybody, invite all three towns together. Mm -hmm. right, do you want to do that weapon? before the feasibility study is finished I, for the for the community, or are we talking it, about the select board? I don't. I think it's important to do as much as you, you're going to need multiple meetings to get people to attend and to understand 
what's in front of us, what the true need is of the community, regardless of where it goes. They have to understand that it's not just going to be what we've always had in a used building with the we're going to get by. We need to really, and, and then get a sense from the communities whether they have the appetite for that or not. I mean, do we really, do we have enough folks to get something passed? It might take a couple times, but, you know, people are concerned about their taxes and everything going on. There's a lot happening, and but this is important and it's been on the back burner. I mean, this is the excuse that everybody uses for every project we do that's not a senior center. But the seniors need something, right? That's what you always hear. Why are you doing a library with the seniors? Why are you doing a cow with the seniors? This is what you say. That, well, we've heard you. This is what the seniors need. So step up. Now's your time. So I think, but it's important to get across what we need. And I think us saying it and the Doug and Chris and just talking about why we're dispelling the fact that you can just use the spaces that we have and remodel a little bit and it'll be fine. It'll be what we can get by. No one wants to take on debt. Well, towns grow. You take on debt and you pay it off. It's what happens. You know, it's just... I think it's really important to really get across to the communities the the true need. Well, then I, you know, if um, I think it would be beneficial then at this point to put together a meeting. I mean, like I know annual town, especially town meetings going on in Jerfield on Monday, but um, you know, in the and all of the towns maybe. Um, the beginning of November, yeah. try to get something together to give people an update of where the process is. Yep. No decisions have been made and right. come up with all of the talking points you right. know, that are accurate, factual, um, not fiction. Right. Regardless of where it's going, these are the things that we have found based on the discussions with all the community members and the experts who do this for a living all over the country. These are the spaces you need for these pro for these programs, yeah. for exercise. You can't just well, and then the, for the, other piece, you the other piece, too, that I've, I've realized is that people are very unknowledgeable about what services we offer. Mm -hmm. even, even though we've done the postcard mailings and other things like that, people think that, oh, you know, people just come here to have coffee. No, like yeah. they, no, you know, like Fran can tell you and, and you know, all, all four of the people who are here today can tell you that we offer so much more. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we were able to do digital uh, literacy reimbursement. So yeah. some folks got internet paid for for up right. to $500 for over the grant duration or got a new iPad. Um, we help people with SNAP applications, with fuel systems applications, yeah. with resources of, you know, where do I go for these things? And we get those we get those phone calls all the time, but there's really no definitive way to track those. Yeah. I mean, you know, um, because my senior center is not set up that way where, you know, if you get a what we I would call in the military aspect, we get a quick track call. So like a family member is asking for a, a nominal resource. You know, and they're not a number, they're not something that's actively coming, but we get those calls like every day. We get at least three to four. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, of what services, where do I go? And people are like, Oh, thanks so much. Just keep saying so, you know, I think we're gonna people are just gonna take mark. Yeah. I think that's what we're gonna do, yeah. uh, start doing because it's just you know, there's and sometimes it can be hard because you get like random things are turned away into something else, but I think that's something we can try to capture, but that's not something we've been able to capture in the past because we just haven't had a quick button to push or something on the on mm -hmm. my senior system. Mm -hmm. I've actually been looking at the other programs out there, but there's mm -hmm. they're all kind of similar. Yeah. I mean, um. Yeah. So, you know, but we just got to keep telling our story. Yeah. Keep telling our story over and over and over, and the need and the requirements that are required for that need, and just yeah, have to just keep pounding it. It's like a lie. You just got to keep beating it until everyone thinks it's true. <laughs> it happens. I mean, the well, more you talk about it, but this lie. is not a lie. It's but but that's lie. what happens. People just kind of keep going on and on and on. But yeah. we need to kind of just keep saying it until people really understand yeah. the requirements and, and what's needed and, and the cost that it's going to take to do it. This meeting that you're talking about, would it be during the day or in the evening? I think we would do multiple meetings. We would do one during the daytime because I know most of our older adults don't like to drive in the evening. Yeah. And then, you know, stuff in the evening for those who work during the daytime who, you know, or their children are involved in activities, you know, so we want to be kind of mindful 
for both. Um, and it would also be something we would have FCAP at to record, um, and we would also yeah. show it, you know, online and like, things like that to right. get out there. Um, and with our, you know, with our relationship with the reporter, I'm sure we can have a yeah. you know, an article out there just talking about where we're moving to yeah. next yeah. in the process. Because I know they put out an article in Monday's paper for folks to come yeah. Yeah, yeah. On that was a nighttime. Yeah. So yeah, we but... were able to get, um, you know, we did, uh, we did stuff in the paper, we did stuff, you know, online, we did stuff, you know, email blasts in the newsletter, flyers all over the place. Um, so, you know, we can definitely work on that piece. Um, yeah. There's someone who's been very patient. Too. Oh, I know it's been discussed in the past about calling it a communion center instead of a senior center. Mm -hmm. Do you think that folks would get behind that more so That's than a just point. a senior center? Could so one of the things that was feedback on one of the surveys, maybe this was you know, <laughs> with having an adult community center. So um because some of the feedback I've received from some folks have been the kids have lots of places to go. Could there be somewhere where adults could go? Because after high school. You know, there's really nowhere around here for people to get together. Mm -hmm. Um, so you know, I I think I think yeah. if we were to go that way, we could definitely build more community support because mm -hmm. it you know, and then in addition, we could do a couple different things. One, um, you know, talk to see talk to the rec departments for all three towns to see, hey, what are your needs? But there would also be some you know some guidelines and stuff of if it's being used different hours that it should be left in a nice clean situation yeah. because that's an issue we've run at over at the Holy Family Church was when there were other things, we, you know, so coming in. Sharing space can sometimes be a little difficult, but I think if everyone's on board, but that, that wouldn't be an issue. You would have to be scheduled. Yeah. 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 Make sure that people know who's going in there and that it's reserved for you. A different food. But I do, I, I kind of, I'm agreeing with you because I've mm -hmm. thought about it before too. Uh, um, and I, what you just said makes perfect sense that our recognitions would probably love to have a facility yeah. where they could run some classes uh, during the times when we're not operating as yeah. a senior specific. Yeah, like, like, so like a senior, yeah. senior Tai Chi class. Yeah. Yep. And I don't know, make the Adrian Bailey. <laughs> but older. you could do intergenerational like, you could, for Tai Chi and all those other. They don't necessarily they don't, have to yeah, That's right. Seniors. They don't necessarily have to. We could give priority to seniors on some, or we, you know, we get the whole slew of policies you could have. The yeah. majority of the time during the day, it's the seniors. That's when they're retired seniors. They're here and they're mm -hmm. Using the programs yeah. and then after hours, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. after hours, hours when you know, yeah. yeah well, the other thing so much. that we're looking to do is to, um, you know, to be resources to everyone in the community, like you know, we do our food pantry and things like that. But mm -hmm. you know, we've been limited. Um, sometimes I'll stay later, or one of the other staff will stay late if someone can't come in to pick up their brown bag mm -hmm. or something else because they work during the day or can't get yeah. here until after hours. So we're, you know, we try to be flexible, but I think by offering expanded programs, you know, if you make it an adult community center, be, you know, because there are lots of places, you know, young, young folks, oh, yeah. you know, um, with the gyms and everything else, but you would be able to have that continuity. So even if someone's in their twenties, maybe they have, you know, someone in their family that needs to support older, or maybe they just want to come feel part of the community and, you know, build. And I think that's, really important because social isolation is is rampant in our area plus i mean where do you go to socialize i mean there's there's not a lot of places people can get together yeah you know, so, so, that don't involve alcohol right well that don't right. involve don't alcohol, alcohol either exactly. because most like people will you know go to a plate a bar or somewhere else yeah. you know yeah. and you're drinking yeah, yeah so like make it a place that people you don't have to drink to come here or you know mm -hmm. all of those things you just come here to socialize or go to an activity or whatnot i think that would be great mm -hmm. for that ask a consortium question Mm -hmm. Sure. I'm just trying to make sure I want to make sure I'm fully understanding. So, in every case, what are we looking at? The town, the Um. Well, yeah. 
we're trying to open up the possibility that a town won't have to own the building. If we become a consortium, then and the potential is that we could own the building. But the realistic thing is we need to hand out agreements with the towns for support. Unless somehow a nonprofit appears that is able to fundraise the millions of dollars that needed yeah. for us, which I'm just not holding out for that to happen. No. Uh, I'm sure a nonprofit will fundraise some of it, yeah. but it's going to mean a commitment from the towns. It just means that you wouldn't have one town has to commit to the whole right. thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, that the ownership in the end, if the ownership is a consortium of the towns, then the towns are owning it all. The towns mm -hmm. are owning it via that consortium that they're participating in. Uh, but it also, being a consortium, does not require that we own whatever property is necessary. So if there is like a two, two of the three that we're considering, it's town owned land right. uh, and could potentially be um, if in Deerfield, they were willing to level the church and build a new building. Uh, to me, that's an interesting one where the town owns the land, but does the town of Deerfield have to be the one who takes out the loan for a new building? Mm -hmm. Maybe not. Maybe if we're a consortium, then we all have a piece of that. Right. Uh, yeah, in, in you know, we all have a commitment towards that. There's no, there's no need for the town to sell to the consortium as part of that deal. There's no requirement no, that a town right. would sell right. to the consortium. Right. Exactly. That's all. Right. Exactly. Yeah. That, that consortium just gives us that extra bit of flexibility, which we may never use. Right. Um, I don't think Ashfield and Shelburne and, um, and Buckland have ever used that particular part of their agreement because they've always had a space that was already owned by them. That's so to me, that's actually uh, important that that other possibility exists. But if there's an easier solution, I don't need to use that. Absolutely, we, we don't have to use that. They would, what if the uh, site was waiting? If the site was waiting, mm -hmm. wait, he already owns that. And, and it would be paying rent. Do we be paying rent to Waitley? Mm -hmm. That's which is kind of what we're doing. We're paying rent, well, not to a town right now, but you know, uh, uh, as we used to when we were in the old building mm -hmm. uh, And that's so that would be, and then in that case, then the interesting thing for the new construction would that be something that is easier for uh, one town to take on with the commitment from the other town about? Mm -hmm. Would the consortium be uh, a good? way to do that or would that be something where it's still easier for one town to take that but it, it, it's going to require a commitment from all the towns no matter what mechanism we use yeah and that's uh and that that's that's sort of the unknown part right mm -hmm. so, sorry i think i got no got in, or, not correct. nearly a rant <laughs> 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 Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah. So I guess the decision is do we want to try and pull some money together to add a third space or do we want to yeah. pare it down to two? Great. So one of the yeah, so to talk about uh, for yeah, we, uh, two, which two? We had a well we also got a request um from the uh from Margaret and Ardowitz, the interim town administrator for Sunderland to inquire about if we were to, uh, what would the cost be instead of just narrowing it down to two sites um, to add the third as a whole site? Because, you know, they've gone through the process for most of it so far. It would just be um, the design piece. So uh, Chris Wanti uh, from EDM sent an email back saying that um, he would say we're in the ballpark of another $15,000 in fees for the design team to put together a full conceptual design for a third site, um, which would include detailed floor plan, detailed site plan, a rendering of the facility interior and exterior, depending on the site, and a full cost estimate for those scope of work. So, uh, you know, they did thirty-five for the two thirty-five thousand dollars is the cost for the two sites covered under the current grant to your field has for seventy-five thousand. So in order to do the full conceptual design, it would be another around fifteen thousand dollars. Yeah. So um, it, in a way, 
um, if we were if we were to go for trying to get that money, it sort of puts off the decision of which site to not mm. use. And, and sorry, that's right. not very articulate, but um, but to ignore. You know, to to <laughs> yeah. So it's like so to, to me, maybe the question is: Are we ready to kick off one of these sites off the list uh, at this point? Is there um, the like the focus group in the end? Zero in Sunderland, mostly primarily because of the location. Yes. Is reminding me of what um, uh, what Pete said yeah. at one of our meetings. Uh, mm -hmm. Kind of expressed that sentiment that you know if it were anywhere else but where it is, yeah. it would be right. a really great right. uh, uh, building for a senior center. So I guess I'm wondering. I don't know how many folks here from Sunderland. Have Doug, you're the only Sunderland person. Okay, yeah. So what, I mean, what do Sunderland folks think about that? I mean, I mean pressure representing the entire <laughs> world. You know? <laughs> um, but, uh, I mean, so that, I mean, we should consider each of the sites as, mm -hmm. as potential to be knocked off. And then if we can't eliminate one, then maybe we make the case to try and get ARPA money from each town in the sum of about $15,000 to make that third one. In, in some ways, I, I love getting more information. I love the idea of getting more information, mm -hmm. but maybe that's putting the cart before the horse. Let's think about each site right now uh, as a potential candidate to kick off the list and see if we come to a consensus mm -hmm. or... So I'm, I'm definitely biased towards Deerfield, obviously, but... Um, but it comes with a lot of issues. Parking, a building that we don't know what the percentage wants to hang on to and doesn't. We put money into it. We've done a kitchen over. There's like, still, regardless, there's not enough space based on our needs. I'm looking at our needs, and that's what we get across to people. So, but I think with the possibility of space opening up either on the piece of property that the current town hall is right now or remodel that building or something. Um, I know it's not all together or maybe we put an addition. I, anyways, there's there's room there with a new library that can be utilized by the seniors. There'll be a brand new town hall. There'll be parking around. There'll be, it's centrally located. I think it's important to keep our mind open of what we could do on that chunk of land somewhere with something that's there. Um, I think Sunderland is a great option because it, ha it, it has a nice newer space that could be remodeled pretty easily, but my concern is that it is closer in Amherst than it is to any of our communities, especially if we want to pull in Conway. So um, I, I, I'm concerned about that. Waitley is really close to us, center, centrally located, was going to, you know, possibly be the place for the EMS. It was like kind of right there. If we could open up our you know, two industrial, industrial drives, drives yeah. and just have a nice ride out that's not kind of like not quite safe there at that intersection. Um, and we're working on that mm -hmm. in towns to try and make that open. Um, I think, you know, and there's space to do an addition there. And, you know, it, it also has its issues. It's not a, you know, it's not, um, a brand new building and it needs some remodeling and space, but it has plenty of parking. It has enough room for an addition. So I think those Deerfield and Waitley are stronger for me. It's just that Sunderland is would be number one if it was anywhere closer in the in our towns. But um and I don't know, you know, we're looking at, you know, there's still so many moving parts. We're looking at trying to take over a, you know, we have the Brayburn property in town. It's been stuck for so long. We're in talks with somebody to possibly take a house and put access in. So hope it's up another chunk of land. Um, you know, the town hall. There's a lot of different things still moving around. We don't know what's happening with senior housing. If senior housing is there, it'd be great to have a spot near there. So I feel like Deerfield has some opportunities, but it also has some huge roadblocks with that building specifically. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, those are my two cents on it. I'll, um, I'd love to hear what everyone else says. Um, I'll say my two cents are, well, we're, we're comparing two public public spaces, two private buildings. They right. could be sold tomorrow. Yep. Yeah, we yep. know. And uh, so part of it says, well, even if this, are we still looking at private spaces? Right. Maybe something will pop up that will make more sense. 
there's one thing I do see about it. This one is it's much faster. Yeah. I mean, this, this could happen. You could yeah, it's swing your issues up or whatever you could Yes. Yeah, it's not right. Yeah, that's a big difference. I think yeah. these these two phones are years mm -hmm. away. Mm -hmm. um, so you're right. Yeah. I, you're right. I you're right. Totally recognize that this is geographical. Just look at the population. Yes, yeah. Deerfield, you know, they're way apart closer to the center. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the success there. Yeah. I'm going to start sharing my screen. Uh, yeah, there's I'm going to put up the. Um, Much quicker. Uh, I kind of, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Sunderland. Much quicker. Is the biggest <laughs> option yeah. if. Um, purchase. The only thing I said, I know people don't use it, but. If the bus service were better, yeah. 30 minutes or anything, we got South Lake, and then all the way then, probably mm -hmm. there must bus service for the PTA. Right, right, which is why all that stuff you're doing with your grants is so important. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. uh, and then uh, Deerfield, uh, you can say, let's say it has its issues. Yes, it does. Um, but uh, is, um, yeah, it has some inter. Interesting um, possibilities. Um, I take let me say it's like due to um, the um, South Deerfield, I'll call it Canvas. Canvas, yeah, it's exactly. probably the closest popularity. I mean, yeah, the uh, right to the closest to population yes. centers. Um, and they, uh, and when they say it has its issues, that will surely delay the yeah. start. By years. Of anything. By years. <laughs> we won't see it. You won't right. see it, and I'll, I'll be lucky if I see it. <laughs> yeah. Um, and that's not an apostrophe. Okay. Dear Pete. Uh, and uh, so I don't, I don't mean that to sound sarcastic or anything has its issues, but. Yeah, I just don't think I want to enumerate. No, I agree. but they include things like will the church ever be torn down? If we're doing this feasibility study, it's going to be for that church church area. It's not going to be a feasibility study for the town, the, the town hall when it's eventually empty. Um, uh, and that's so. Um, uh, so what's the timeline on the town hall meeting? Sure. Yeah, what's that? What's the time the the, the time hall? Uh, I would say next year. I mean, it's it's starting. The, I mean, well, it depends on the vote Monday. Sure, but uh, vote goes Monday. We've got the four million bucks that needs to get going right away. Yeah, we're going to start in spring. I think. So, probably take a year to build. I think that's for model and build. What's going on then? So we're going to move the town hall from the. Current town oh, hall to eighteen eighty. Oh, okay. Then what's going in? Then what's going into the town hall building? Anything we want. Oh, <laughs> senior center, senior housing, nothing. Better. Here's my concern with that: mm -hmm. is you know the police station has already been, or the police have already shared that you know the police station is smaller. So yeah, wouldn't they want to expand towards the eighteen eighty eight building a little bit? They're not coming the other way. So then it reduces the parking. Uh, it's already police parking, but right yeah. that's not good. Are you reducing something to pop that building up into it? I think they're gonna turn their bays over and I think all they're doing is adding on some bays. But yeah. yeah. Any parking. approximation for square footage on that? I don't know. Probably just whatever the bays are now, a couple of garage bays. Mm -hmm. I, was sure. I don't think it's a big but so regard so depending on how the vote goes on Monday, if senior housing doesn't get passed for a multitude of thoughts and comments for mm -hmm. other folks in the community who do not have wonderful knowledge, um, is there the potential to put senior housing there in that location? In which the town where the current town hall is. That was one study that was done. They talked about putting senior housing all over the ball field and in place of the town hall and all that, but that was just a conceptual design to, I mean, I mean, they have to really do something. I mean, we only bought this space because of church or senior housing. Yeah. So I don't know what we're going to do with it otherwise. And it really depends on if, a, you know, we need a developer to come in and say, this is feasible. We can put 
20 units here or not, or whatever it takes to make it worthwhile to build. So, well, and, and yeah. just to share, I think, um, you know, if the opportunity is there to put additional senior housing on that other space, I think the community is really going to be for it. It's, yeah. Well, Blake is concerned that everybody out of the community is going to move in. No, if you do, when, when we, um, we're trying to Sanders, when we did Sanderson Place, you know, when the community did Sanderson Place, there's a the majority of the percentage is Sunderland residents have a priority, and it's it for that initiative. Apparently, it has to do with money, like like federal funding. Yeah. No, oh. your your uh, your wealth, right? So you may want to live in a community, but if you have too much money, you get kicked out of that. Well, yeah, because it's based on income and need, and not so, a, but and I, I don't know how you. many. Not everyone in Deerfield has all that money. No, I agree, so. but a lot do. So it's you know it's not a it's not it's a fairly wealthy community. There's certainly plenty of seniors that don't. I mean, it's all fixed income and stuff. But hopefully, there's enough to fill a good majority of it with a Deerfield resident. That's what we want. Yeah. Because that would free up houses for young know, families to move into, and yep. that's the goal. But yeah, it's all it's a lot confusing about it. We'll see what people want to do. Okay, so I'm kind of summarizing here. When we think about Sunderland, um, we are thinking about the biggest advantage it has is that it's the quickest option. Yeah. That if we get somehow get over the uh, purchase hurdle, then that gets us someplace quickly. Yeah. And you could you know, do it in phases and build something, build onto it as you need to. Um, and, yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, and But the location thing is a, is a really big thing. Mm -hmm. And the purchase of the building is not not a done deal. That's all right. right. Barrier mm -hmm. there. Um, I wrote. Oh, Dan. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because we're talking about Sunderland, and you just just mentioned like the purchase of the building would be the biggest hurdle. Um, do you feel that Sunderland would be potentially open to purchasing that if we were to pay rent? I could be also going to mention. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Some folks who the only thing they're doing is a lot of interest in the yeah. center. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I, I think yeah. that's that problem. That's what I see. Absent a firm commitment from other towns yeah. to, uh, to really help pay for that, and yeah. that's a very reasonable mm -hmm. thing for people to to, to feel. Yeah. I mean, it was initial excitement, but again, yeah, well, we can't do it. You know, it's, it's, it's yeah. yeah. Um, Deerfield, we just went through. Yes, yeah. the issues that would surely be the, the biggest delay. Yeah. Um, but there are some interesting possibilities because of that campus. Uh, it could even be that the you know we, on the feasibility study we're looking at that one location, but could we learn something from that that makes it yeah. uh, you know, it makes it makes us say yeah that's really the right location and maybe it's got to be next to the police station or right. that or something. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. That's. I mean, I, but we it, won't really get that information out right. of this. So in a way, I don't really like talking about other locations yeah. at campus because it's not, not really fair. what we're getting yeah. information on. But well, the other thing though, in regards to that, is if it's just per se, if it were considered to be obviously there's a lot of people who are not gonna want to tear down the church, but there might be more people interested in tearing down the town the current town hall where you're using the footprint, you know, like mm -hmm. in that space, because I mean, obviously yes, structural things in the bottom price point would change or whatnot, but you might have the ability to do that double decker style that we're looking at for doing this. So you could yeah. potentially yeah. use it for that space, yeah. but I don't it know. Could, it could be some information is reused. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Um, so, uh, right, so people in basically Deerfield were excited about the actual physical location. Yeah. But we know there's a lot of issues that will delay it and yeah. delay it. And I and that is sometimes the way to kill a project is to mm -hmm. keep it delayed. Mm -hmm. Um and Waitley, I wrote this in, but I would appreciate anybody adding into it. Uh because the space requires new construction, it will not be uh ready 
as soon as Sunderland would be. So it's definitely in terms of time, mm -hmm. the second quickest. But because the land's up, and that's really uh, because the land's already yeah. up yeah. Yeah. by the town. Um, and the other barriers kind of seem smaller. We need mm -hmm. to get, uh, and, you know, we wouldn't, we would maybe know more from a, a information we get from yeah. a, a study. But there, um, you know, could you phase that in? Could you do your construction in a couple of phases? Mm -hmm. um, then the question is, if you do the new construction, um, I'd have to talk to Pete about it. Like, maybe we need to know that new construction, um, how do we fund that? Is that way we take the, uh, mm -hmm. the loan and getting a commitment for payments? That might be the quickest way to do it. Right. Um, or it might be a consortium right. has to play a role in that. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, the other thing that people responded well to is it's centrally located, though it's not really walkable. So centrally located, and most, I am trying to think, anybody, nobody could really get there by walking, mm -hmm. other than there's a very few bunch of houses on um, kind of north on Long Plain Road mm -hmm. there, uh, that is in some ways, and then there's that little park that's really South Deerfield, those folks could probably, but it's really in the middle of Parliament. Um, yeah. So there's not... There's not, much traffic. there's not a lot of traffic, so you could walk. <laughs> well, but a lot of the other senior centers are not centrally located in the center of town. Oh, like in Hadley, like in yeah. Hadley, Greenfield. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they're not in the center right. of town, but right. And we and but I'm what I'm hearing is that there are certain certainly people who that would be great if it were walkable for at least some people, but it's never going to be walkable for the majority of people, mm -hmm. right? But and even if you're like while Deerfield has the you know the multitude of usage for um for the participation um you know even here is partially walkable but we increased by coming here our participation for Sunderland by eighty five members on within our first year within our first year of being here yeah so and and not everyone walks. You know, the majority of our folks don't, even in Sunder or South Deerfield, how many people are actually walking? It wasn't a large number. Mm -hmm. It was just a, maybe a handful of people. Mm -hmm. And then for going and doing other errands, the Wheatley site is right there, not far. It's less than, a, it's about a mile from the center of South Deerfield or from the other site in South Deerfield, um, you know, to get to. So, People can still run their errands, go to the bank, you know, and stuff. And it would also open it up from, you know, just people going just centrally there. You know, people are going to drive regardless. Most of our folks drive, I'll be honest. Like, that's why we're, yeah. even at the church, we only have maybe the people who lived across the street who came sometimes or, you know, who, I mean, who came who would walk. But there wasn't as many uh, you know, you might mm. Yeah, we are not a country of walkers. No. <laughs> so, um, maybe this would be a good time to open it up to the public who's here. If you have some thoughts that you're, we have for anything I think Waitley's centrally located for everybody, and it'll be a quick, quicker, quicker than to get into the, yeah. I mean, I'd love it to be in Deerfield, but it's, I think, like the hurdles. Yeah. Then you, yes, ma'am. Uh, I keep saying is why can't it be easier? Why can't it be easier? Oh, oh, yeah. I'll drink it more ice water I, than I, that. I, I feel your frustration. The, yeah. The building in Sunderland is fantastic, but. Yeah. Yeah. And we don't really know about that purchase. Right. Yeah. But um, even though you know, even though I drive right now, but should I come to the point where I can't drive and where I live, there's no bus service. Right. But you're actually right on Long Plain. Yeah. Yeah. No, you're on, you're on River Road. Oh, we need to build a sidewalk through that car. Yeah. 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 That. <laughs> a little. Uh, it's but that's bad. why it's also as we're looking forward to expand our transportation options yeah. because. Yeah. Even the site in South Deerfield has a huge hurdle with transportation. If you live in Sunderland, you can't come to our center. 
by transportation. Yeah. There is no There's no cross over in that area. They, uh, from my discussion yesterday with the hall, they don't even service anything up at the Wheatley. They don't go to the parking ride. Yeah, no. it's a park and ride, and they won't even go. So. It's the, because it's just the FRT. I know. But and it, but it's politics, boundaries. It's bags of money in certain people's <laughs> pockets. So big. that's why we have, but that's why we have, um, you know, that's why I'm looking at transportation because that when we had our first initial UMass needs assessment done, we, we got the results in May of 22, the first year of the year. And transportation was the biggest issue that we faced. Mm -hmm. So our goal was with through mass in motion funding. We got those work groups together to talk about transportation and see how we can make changes. And you know, we got a lot of that accomplished. So that's why we're progressing yeah. to where we yeah. are now. Um, but most and and we also did we taught people how to ride the bus on a fixed route and yeah. people people like that idea one of our members who lives over here on 47 um has visual visual uh disabilities and you know are able to now navigate all of the things and one of our other members um who lives in Sunderland um who's a younger member um you know, has some visual issues and, and rides the bus. And we were able to expand different things from their perspective, you know, having them participate in the group. So it's it's also as the budget moves and changes, the more funding is gonna be needed for transportation from the center because of what the need in the community is and that barrier between the RTAs. And yeah, and that's and that's gonna be true for any of the three locations we're talking about. Yes. Oh yeah. So I guess we're now here. let's go back to the to the board. Are we comfortable just eliminating one of these and moving forward with two? And if so, which one are we most comfortable eliminating? Are we most comfortable eliminating the one that is potentially the quickest option? Though we don't know for sure because of that purchase. Um it will get us someplace perhaps quickly, but it's it's not going to be a central location. Are we willing to just say, oh, these issues, in Jericho, we're never going to want to use that space because it's going to be 10 years before we can even break ground on something. Are we willing to just take that off the table at this point? And I know I'm saying something radical. I just want to be <laughs> Or are we going to say, wait, Lee, who the hell wants to go there? That's in the middle of a bunch of cornfields or whatever fields they are. And it's going to be like all new construction, not all new construction. It's going to be a bigger percentage of construction, and that's going to take some time. But Waitley's never going to want to do that, or whatever we might perceive to be the barriers there. What do we think? What do we think of just deleting one of those now? Because in some ways, that's the path of least resistance. We can, as a group, decide to eliminate one now. We go forward, we get information on the others. And we save fifteen thousand dollars. Then we save fifteen thousand dollars. <laughs> the other option would be: Do we go to our towns and try to hustle in the next, I don't know, two weeks to get ARPA money or some sort of money that we have that we can flexibly spend um, to get a third site added? Um, don't you think if there was a third site, it would? Be Oh, no, already? no, these three sites. Oh, among three the, sites. Yeah, we have okay. to take these three sites so, and eliminate one of them. We have to eliminate oh. one of the three sites that we did the focus group on on Wednesday. So, you know, Joyce is giving the reasons positive and negative as to each location. Okay. So we're trying to figure out, um, you know, which would be the best. Yeah. And, you know, or to get rid of Yeah. And I feel like since, since I'm from Waitley and I don't know, whatever sense the bias for us making sure Waitley is is one of the remaining ones. I'm I'm trying to, to just be as fair as possible uh all around. Um and one of the biggest things that I do want to advocate for is we want one one location. We do not want to be spread out in multiple spaces. We want we don't want to walk across the campus to get well, to the second site. 15 steps. So it's not 15 steps. Is from one building to the other? From the church that far. to town hall is not 15 I, steps. I think we got to be open, Jen. And we got to, because you got to make sure something. Budget. 
the walk from one building to the other? No, if, say we're down to one person, who's going to manage the programs on one site when versus are we down the other? To one person? Huh? When are we down to one person? We had two deaths from family members recently. We were, we were down the Yeah, and we have to we have to overcome that. But I just think we need to be open and not let the perfect be the enemy of the good. And if that location somewhere around there affords us something that will work, I, I just don't think we should turn our nose up to it. Uh, I was just going to try and Google to find out how many steps is it. <laughs> <laughs> it's more than 15. It's it more is. than, okay, more than 15. Okay, good. And I don't, I don't, you don't need to Google it. Google it anymore. I will go back. Um, uh, I'm I, I would like to also say something else. I, would, I kind of get the, the, the reality that if we ask, we do feel it's a little more than for a second. At the age of seven, I think that'd be a good job. I think in the absence of any other information, but if the other information we had was, it's going to cost ultimately twice as much to do it anywhere else. Right. That's true. Or if we had the information that well, it's, it's going to cost one and a half times as much to do it in Waitley and three times as much to do it in Deerfield, then you've got a much, you've got having the information, I think, yeah. is, is really important. And I, so, so my hesitation of, about taking Sunderland off the list is that. You know, the, our towns do appreciate is a bargain. Right. But, you know, if we could get the 15,000 square feet there, get it quickly um, on a relative scale here, of course, um, and have um, some firm information that makes us believe we're actually doing the most cost effective and honestly, perhaps environmentally effective. Do you have the, um, yeah. the the price points that we talked about at last meeting? Because if you look at it, Sunderland is the least expensive. Yeah, right? the, um, and the, the, the first indication that. is it's the least expensive. Twelve thousand dollars, sure. Which is the twelve thousand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah the twelve thousand. But even at the apples, the apples when you yep. it was it was the, it was not cheaper by a lot when you did fifteen thousand square feet. But it was cheaper, and those but those are really those are ballpark high the sky numbers in a way. And when you and when you actually got down to hey, what would we have to do there? I don't really know which way to go. So it might be that we're fooling ourselves to say it would be the cheapest um, because we don't really have that information. And so to me, the hesitation of taking Sunderland off is that 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 might be it might be a bargain. We don't know yet. But it might be uh, a big enough bargain, and the timeline being shorter might be enough to convince people in both the year field and the Yeah, that's a place where we should invest. <laughs> we can yeah. Yeah. I don't you know, think so. pull any no. of these off. No. So, I, I really don't, because I think politically it's not smart, and it's um, we don't have all the answers. Like you said, it could be the cheapest, quickest to do Sunderland. I still feel like your field is essentially located, yeah. and I feel like. Location and, and then there's a lot less obstacles for lately. I mean, they all have pluses and minuses, and yeah. I think we need to have them all done. I would recommend asking for five from each town to get to get all three done, and let let the public decide where we think the best, or or hear from the from the from the people themselves. Like, what would they pick? They're coming in here totally unbiased, never going to go to one of these. What do you think? Yeah, some comments over here. Yeah, if you're willing to have each other. Yeah, yeah. sure. I think it's been almost half a century <laughs> trying to get a senior center quick. And just because it's the quickest, people won't go in the second when they've already said it. it's too far to drive. They don't like 116 to begin with. And some people were coming out of the um, plum tree to, to turn left to come back this way and couldn't get out. Whereas I went down to Route 47 and yeah, got that way. That's but, smart. Yeah, that's smart. People are saying it's too far. Yeah. It's too far. Out of well, if that, if so, I mean, if that's the case, and that we would we really be able to get everybody on board for that, is that where we're, if that's really where we're at? Yeah, then no money. Did we take Sunderland off the list, go forward with Deerfield and Wheatley as more central mm -hmm. locations, mm -hmm. and get the information? Yes. Yeah. And at the same time, I, I mean, I would have no hesitation to go to my board and say, 
But we pitched it. Yeah. Five thousand dollars of ARPA money to get the information yeah. on the Sunderwood site as well. So if we were to prioritize them today, am I hearing that I mean I'm hearing the the most emphasis on the downsides of Sunday. And there is right? absolutely and that, no other building in Sunderland. No other space we can think of closer to town. No, 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 we really would value having that information. I think is that so. Yeah, yeah would we value it enough that uh, you will go to your select board and never pay be a five k, and you'll go to your select board to squeeze five k out of something? You know, where you've got ARPA funds submitted. Another survey, uh, and it's not a survey. It's not a survey. It's not a survey. It's it's That's it's going into that design that you saw. And actually saying, okay, how do we put the exercise room in and the this and then that all these things that we decided are our priorities? So how much. do you actually put that into the space that's available there? Like how do you take that that site in Wheatley where it's got a big warehouse room and a big loading dock room? And what do you have to do to that to make it into all the various programming spaces? It's not a survey. So I mean, you know, this is this is about getting that. Oh, I, I, I which one I misunderstood is I talked about zero value for another level. No, no, in the morning point. No, no, I'm talking about doing something about the five weeks and three for Sunderland, and then at the end we ended up with oh, they changed the vote. Yeah, if we got it. zero votes out of the people that came for the focus group, not interested enough for a focus group to go to that building. Yeah. Not because it's Sunderland, but because it's so far away, far away. difficult to get yeah. to. I think we've got to cut that. Because all the feedback that I've received. If they're not going to go, they're what's, not gonna the, go. See, and what's right. the sense of doing it? I mean, it would, be, it would be great, but it is there. It and is just too far. the argument is um, people don't want to drive. And there. then we go try to fight to get a purchase of it. Yeah. Most people are thinking it's too far out of town. But I don't know, you know. But so, the decision today isn't, are we going to purchase that building or not? Right. So the decision is, are we going to get more information about the cost? That's all the decision is today. Do we want to get more information about a more realistic cost estimate? But if people aren't going to go, well, it doesn't matter what the cost is. It doesn't yeah. matter what the cost is. Right. Yeah. Would, would, if, 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 if it was free, if, <laughs> <laughs> and it's not going to be free. So, 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 so any price, do you would they pay us to go there? It or half the cost of what it would say cost in Waitley? No, if it, it were half the cost and people still wouldn't go, then go. go. Right. Okay. And I'll ask my, no, my, I guess that gives my you the friend. answer. You would go. Yeah, she would go. Oh, she did. <laughs> she walks, Carol walks here all the time. Yeah, she she goes to Waitley for the classes yeah. for the Sutherland. So. Nice. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. yeah. So not everybody yeah. can know, go, but enough. No, go. Yeah. What was the meeting? What was the meeting? What? It was here. It was, it was here on Wednesday. House. Yeah, it was just an open house for the community. Um, you know, we were hoping for 50 yeah. folks to come through, but we had about 37. Okay. So, and then we're also still doing a, um, a survey that uh, that yeah. young put together and one of ours I to talk about programs and some other stuff. So yeah, so we'll have that data captured in a few weeks. Um, but yeah, so we're we're working yeah. on that. But but I think the biggest deterrent. While Sunderland would be done faster, the hurdle cheaper. is the purchase price. It's also cheaper. It's like half the cost mm -hmm. for the volume of space versus the other two tap. But I need people to show up. Oh, well, yeah. No, right. I don't think it was half. It was, it, no, so, well, it was a little more. Than, yeah, right. it was the, a little the more. The 12K space was. Was the 9,000. Yeah. Right. Or 9 million. Were, like they were all double digit millions. Yeah. So. Um, no, there there was one that was nine million dollars. That's why I was asking you to pull out. But that's the twelve thousand. Yeah. yeah, that was not the album. Yeah. Okay, so it's three thousand square feet. So yeah, I will. Um, uh, let me see. Uh, 
and we go like that. Yeah, we go. Is that right? Yeah. Um, great. There we go. So, so that's that's, that's for... the um, the single story uh, renovated mm -hmm. um, for the church for the church. It's only seven, um, which is only half the space we need. Um, right. If you were to build new, it's a little bit more, mm -hmm. uh, but probably long term costs are lower. If you were to build new and make it two stories, right. it's sixteen and a half million. If we go to four Sandy Lane. There's only one option there, which is the 15,000 right. square feet, which yeah. would be uh, a little less expensive by about a million and a half dollars. Yeah. Um, the Plum Tree Road, and I think this is the one which sure, with the renovation uh, yeah. with the renovation uh, is uh, 14.3, so it's a half a million, less. a little bit more than uh, less yeah. than Waitley. Uh, call it uh, a, a, a three quarters of a million dollars less than Waitley. Mm -hmm. Um, and then if you don't put an addition on there, that's the one that is about 10 million. I, I round 9.8 up to yeah. yeah. No, it says yeah. with the renovation, the total cost of construction for oh, renovation only, but, yeah. and then the total of all the construction adding the 15,000 square feet below, because they do have that incorporating that cost. Here? Right there, where you see the red, total of all construction, 6.7. And then the soft costs and then the purchase of the site equals that 9.8. I agree, but that's without adding on the 3,000. This is the 12,000 square foot option. But why does it say 15,000 15, square feet to the left? I think this one Yeah. Uh, is the same as yeah, 15. this one. So they added only $250,000 for, uh, or excuse me, yeah, so the renovation option. Uh, oh, they must not have made the change of time. Yeah, they, they, I, I think. Oh, sorry. Go back down. I'm sorry. I just read it. I was looking at the 3,000, so my apologies. Right. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah that, I think something's wrong with that number there. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah, yeah. um, that number is, I think that's supposed to be five. Yeah. And then that would be five. Uh, yeah. Thank you for that because that's what confused me. Um, so that's, that's our cheapest that's, option. Well, that's our cheapest option, but it's not. Okay. And we have to cut things, so we shouldn't yeah. be comparing. Yeah, ten million, fourteen million. Yeah, so fourteen three, fifteen one, and sixteen five. So it's the cheapest option. But not that much cheaper than waiting. So I think hurdles would no. you know, make hurdles so, would make it less expensive. Right. So I guess the needed question is who uh, is the you know which set of hurdles do we <laughs> do we uh, do we think, think are worse? And we need growth, and we need people to come. And I think that's I think that's waiting. Waiting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but we, we don't need to. We'll go down to one second. Yeah. Wait, in South Jer or Deerfield, would be the two locations. Could. I think you should eliminate Thunderland. It would save fifteen thousand dollars. You know, most of the folks in this room have shared from their conversations and what yeah. I've heard. And your focus group. And our focus group. Yeah, we trust our focus group. Yeah, our focus and our people and had, our um, yeah. The general folks from Sunderland. I think we actually have three people from Sunderland. Mm -hmm. Only two from Wheatley. And then three from down here, or three from Deerfield. Uh -huh. So um yeah, even the Sunderland folks ended up picking uh lately over um Sunderland and Deerfield. So yeah, I mean, it's a reality. Yeah, just do back. Yeah, back side of Sanders Place, mm -hmm. going north. This is oh, well, well, this field field. Yeah, I was gonna say it's another field, right? Yeah, I mean yeah. It's, 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 it doesn't oh, make me curious. Cornell Road is too heavy. Oh, That's why they moved Sanderson Place further to the Washington. Yeah, I see. But I'm seeing north, like behind his last piece and stuff. I mean, that probably is... that's all the golf hole. That's all the sugar well, sugar miles. Also, <laughs> that's great out to the egg. But it is. It is. Nothing else is too long. I know. Actually, it's all exactly. Not all the eggs are stale. No, it's just. Who owns it? Thanks for sharing. Yeah. Sure. Sure. So, yeah. 
So are we at that point where we're at that consensus? Because then we can we can move forward and recommend. Uh, I guess I think technically we recommend. I don't. I think I'm going on my uh, my. I, I could be wrong. I think we recommend to the Deerfield Board of Selectmen to direct our consultants to uh, eliminate the Plum Tree Road site and do the more detailed uh, financial analysis and layout and what you were describing earlier, the, you know, mock up who was really good for where does everything fit for the South Deerfield site. The, uh, I'll make that motion. No. Yeah. Okay. Oh, well, um, okay. Just, There's a motion, but maybe we if, you, oh, if you wait for a second, then I'll support it. Yes, I'll second. Okay. Uh, motion made and seconded. So now I was, I'll was. i go around the room to let anybody chime in if they want. And I'm going to start with Jen. I want to. I'd like to start with Jen. Thank you. I want to inquire um, if we can recommend that we go with the, I mean, the larger scale markup yeah. for the full square footage, not full the square. smaller section. Is that something I, that we're being I, I, about? Yeah, so or, like the double, the, double the two story right. facility, not just the, the one. one that we need. Yeah, the, the one that we need. Okay, I just wanted to yeah. be clear on no, that. We need to tell people what we need. Okay. Yeah, that's what it is. If they want to do something else, let them spend some money mm -hmm. and figure it out. This is what we decided. Okay. You have anything you'd like to add? <laughs> No, I'd be happy with either site, but it sounds like it would be quicker to, to move into Waitley. Yeah, but we can get information on both. Yes. And but I think having more information is better. Uh, either site is good. Same thing. There's yeah. much information on yeah. All right. Um, is there any further discussion? Okay, then why don't we put that to a vote? Uh, David? Sorry. Aye. Joyce? Aye. Okay, so um, I imagine the best way to do that is to write a letter and and, and send it on. Yeah. Do you uh, want to do it from all three of you or just one per chair? Um, or whatever gets it out. Yes. It's um, quickly. So that's something you. Um, I can sign it and say on behalf of the yeah. Board. That's perfect. Uh, oversight and yep. uh, maybe we'll send that to Chris Dunn. Yeah, yep. Christopher Dunn. And yep. he will get it on the yep. next selection to get yes. us uh, at the earliest possible. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Would you like me to write that letter? Yes, please. Okay. <laughs> you can send it to me and put it on the letterhead if you don't have it. Okay. But let me know. Yeah. I think I don't have a letterhead, but I'll, I'll, okay. I'll do something in Word and send it to you so you can use it. Yep. Um, with that being said, um, I will also move forward for uh, creating something on Saturday for for November's time frame to do the public informational sessions. Um, I will check with EDM staff to see when their availability is to do something during the daytime. Um, and I will also check with Frontier to make sure that we have the space mm -hmm. there. Um, if Frontier is not available, we could always use Waitley during the daytime because mm -hmm. of the school schedule. That's my only concern. And then do something in the evening or weekend, hopefully in the evening um, at Frontier, you know, the auditorium. So that'll give the community opportunity to also go to, yeah. to that. Um, sure. okay. and we, even, so we're managing these meetings before, during, and after getting the final results from the from our consultants, right? That's what we, my yeah, understanding they, was from our I, discussion earlier of the yeah. meetings. Yeah, we're not wanted. we're not waiting for the consultants to finish. So right, we're, we're letting but, we're giving them an informational update so that they're aware of the process we and where our needs are. So, um, yeah. you know, and then we'll be able to elaborate on those needs as we get closer yeah. in the spring, based on our current UMass uh, needs assessment, um, focused with age and dementia, because previously there was no dementia pieces entered and it's also to see what training and other things community services and other things we need regarding this and have input from that as well mm -hmm. um so that way it was all the stakeholders within the big communities not just our older adults which we are focusing on but we're being more inclusive yeah. with the other pieces um to really uh, get the word out and to just look at everything yeah. um yeah. so. what emotional minutes 
Oh yes, yes. Okay. Uh, all right. So we're done. So we're done with, the, with that item of the agenda. Uh, thank you, everyone. Yeah, yeah thank this you. Is, we're doing something that's hard. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And that's why it feels hard. We shall yeah. go. Hard go. It's hard to let go. And I think um, I. And well, I'm proud of us. Yeah, I think we're moving in the right direction. We're moving in there. Yes, we're moving in the right direction. Yeah, it's nice to see a positive momentum yeah. going again. Yeah. Okay. Let's hope we keep it. Uh, <laughs> so under uh, uh, minutes, we're going to be under items unanticipated. I would uh, I have a motion to approve the minutes for September 18th, 2024. So moved. Thank you. And uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, Good. and then I want to make one correction on the 21st. Um, it was where I stated that I'm not in favor of remodeling the 1880, uh, 1821 professional church. Uh, I stated that multiple architectural studies have recommended tearing it down. I don't know if architectural studies have, but I certainly plenty of discussions with different contractors I've talked to have said probably not. So maybe if that could get but would you it's, like it to be maybe just that multiple discussions have recommended tearing it down because I don't know if I could point to a study yet. It was the first, uh, there's a study on the building, the original page, one, the, okay, I, at I believe, least one. I believe that one said, and then this here, yeah, um, from the information that Chris Wonky shared, he recommended that it be torn down, yeah, and I don't have that study yet, so maybe just. Discussions, multiple or, discussions. Yeah, with one yeah, based, yeah. architectural. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. He That's certainly fine. stated this, but he yeah. stated based on what? Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. So I just want to make sure. That, about that. That's not a problem with one architectural study. Is that still taking it down? Yeah. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah. Everybody's going to ask me. You know what? Then I, I definitely um, understand that. I know you're in the middle of making motion. Yep. So I'll. So yeah, so the, the I'll make a motion to approve the September twenty first, twenty twenty four revised minutes. Is it favor? Aye. 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 All right. Very good. Is there anything else that was under um unanticipated? I feel like there was one other thing. So we talked about the two aspects of the PBTA for the current project that we're talking with the potential project. Yeah, with Part B. Oh, we're uh, back to Part B. All right. And then um, we are, but we already discussed that. We discussed the feasibility piece here. We're going to go forward with the uh, public informational session. Um, I don't know if there was anything else at this okay. point in time. Um, and. Um... At some point, we need to. I don't know what the time frame is for our next meeting, but our next meeting, I hope we won't do it on a Saturday morning. It's proving to be a little much for our for our director, <laughs> although she's always, uh, you know, giving us a hundred and ten percent. It might be time to start just asking for a hundred instead of hundred and ten, yeah, uh, or at least for a little while. Oh, for sure. um, and uh, I really appreciate your willingness to do this because I think we needed longer meetings when people weren't hungry. Yeah. <laughs> but the other, the only other question I have is, um, thank you for that. And the we discussed getting the consortium potential agreement completed oh. by yeah. December in order to have it move forward for a potential spring. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, that's a good. Yeah. So I just want to know where we are on that, and if our next meeting will solely focus on feasibility and that or just the consortium um or if you have all yeah. well I don't know if Trevor will be back but if you've gone into the mutual yeah. document to to read it make any changes if you want to send anything to me um I can right. put together questions to be asked at the next yeah. meeting yeah. um which would be wonderful to have. Maybe that's a, a, an update thing. You talk to anybody in Sunderland about the consortium agreement. Yeah. Yeah. And Margaret has seen it, I think, that she asked you. Yeah, and Margaret asked me questions about the cost, you know, like what people would pay and if there would be, uh, a, you know, votes taken at or town meetings 
voted were, were to be necessary for all of those things under the consortium, which we would get the permission to make the changes to a consortium agreement versus the IMA we currently have. And then it would be based down, we would talk about the cost analysis or cost distribution would probably stay the same because I think that if you're looking solely on participation, it may be skewed um, because you know, we get the state funding from the formula fund grant, which is received based on how many older adults are within all the three communities. Yeah. So I just, you know, wanted to be, uh, yeah. be open about that. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I think it was, it was purposefully vague on how you would divide costs were you to obtain real estate. Yeah. Because it might be that that's the point where you want to say, well, maybe we should divide it differently. Maybe yeah. we should. And, and it, I think that's completely appropriate, but so maybe for that, I should follow up with Margaret. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and have a chat with her about that. Um, do you know where things stand in there? If there was anybody on the uh, very, very stretched administrative staff I there talk to Chris about it quickly, and then I wanted to talk with Lisa when she comes for a meeting one day. We'll talk okay. about it. So. Okay. And so if we can get, try and get there input on it yeah uh, exactly. whatever that that agreement itself would have to be done at the time yeah yes yeah for sure and um i think the uh, i would mostly want to allay people's fears that somehow we're we're gonna we, we will okay. not be a tax raising right at exactly. that any commitments we make on real property have to be agreed by the counts at yeah. every time and it is an amendment to the agreement the main thing that that consortium will give us immediately is three new board members right one from each town yeah. uh presumably from among the, the membership of our coas that's how yeah. we structured it but yeah. honestly it's not that hard to get on the coa yeah. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to get off that's not open to get off right, right. 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 not it right. for life <laughs> <That's a lifetime. laughs> <laughs> sorry yeah. 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 <laughs> 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 Then I'll be special about the aim as you move here. Yeah. Uh, and so I guess I'd be curious to know what the plus is for where the thing is going to be subjectively. I mean, you can yeah. break it up by census, but it's in the middle of Deerfield, you know, you're a plus for what. Of course. Yeah. 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 It has to be by. Well, by I can, I can honestly speak to you. when we were in Deerfield, we had 124 members. That was it. Yeah. And then um, when we moved here, you know, or my first year there, even when we were in the church, we, we increased 550 something or 130 something. And then the next year was 151. And then after that, um, this year, I think we're over, we're over 100 already. This is my third full, you know, going the third year. Um, so it varies. I mean, we've gotten some folks from out of the three towns as well. Um, you know, and I usually report those statistics to you. I just don't have that um, right the second. But yeah, we've um, we've increased from from all three. You know, we've even gotten additional Waitley folks. Um, so Waitley has a smaller population with 544 older adults. There's 844, I think, we're around here in Sunderland, and about 1600 in uh, a little over 1600 in Deerfield. Uh, but not everyone comes, you know, but we right. increased it to almost $500, five, yeah, 500 <laughs> active members, um, you know, in total. And we do have some folks coming from places like Leverett and Pittsbury and Conway, um, you know, because they don't have a center or Greenfield because they like certain programs that we offer that other places don't. Um, or, you know, some, and here's another thing, some older adults who used to live in Deerfield move to Greenfield because there's no single house there. But they still come because they want to participate and engage with their friends. So that's something to, to know yeah. too. Okay. All right. So our next meeting, we want to be able to have some progress on it. Uh, so uh, I'm trying to think that's not going to happen overnight. So we're yeah. probably looking like a month out. Yeah. From the green from now, and we're not looking at a Saturday. I may have to do that. That's fine. Yeah, that's fine. But what I was going to ask is you're going to zoom in what time of the day usually is it's better for you. By, by the early time, you can wait all, all the time. If it's by Zoom, I can come earlier too. Okay. Um, 
So if, it, if it's a hybrid meeting, I can set it up for people to come in person here, but um, I can definitely have yeah. you both, um, or even Trevor, if you add, we can have you all on my we'll um, for a date. Well, I'm, we're sitting at October 5th, so we're looking at early November, um, and now um, on until the 11th, which I'll be back on the 12th. Okay, so we're probably going to be sometime in the middle of November then. I mean, I, I'm okay with making it a little bit more than that, because what, we're, we're having these other public meetings in between. Yeah, that's my goal. Um, so, uh, let's see. Thursday. Um, and if it's, if it's a... Is, is your work allowing you to do anything that's during the day? With it it the does, day? depending on where I'm at. Yeah. 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 Um, and if you're, if you're coming back from having travel, is that right? Like, did it be like crunch week? Right. It's going to be a crazy week, but I'll, I'll make like, it work. Um, yeah. So it's just so. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, yeah. The, Daytime. 14 is a little crazy because yeah. our warrant is due that day on Thursday. Um, the 13th is bad. 13th night's night. Okay. Yeah. What about yeah. during the day on the 13th? Well, that's our food truck day, so I could do any time between two and four. Is that bad? Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's his okay. day. Uh, Good Friday. Friday, 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 Friday work for everybody? Sometime in the afternoon. Yeah. Uh, Are we thinking afternoon or midday or what? Like two, three, um, yes, something one o'clock. Oh yeah, uh, three to four. I have something, but I could do four, or I could do before three. Trevor, what you said, more like, would a one o'clock work? It will. I mean, the later the better for me, but that's fine. Two, what, two or you one. Bet. Yeah. Wait. Well, if we did two to three, Joyce has something. Yeah. Have something at three. So. Yeah. I have office hours that students actually come to. Yeah. So, actually, yeah, the students, yeah, the students can come. Yeah. And the students will want to, you know, yeah. put in their opinions too. But they probably won't have they're gonna want to know how to build a circuit or how to <laughs> how to work client change. So, <laughs> so do we want to do so So you're talking one o'clock then or four? Yeah, do we anticipate uh or I, or if we want to do Thursday the fourteenth in the afternoon? We just can't do the morning. Yeah. Um, could we do something like 3.30? On the 14th. On the 14th, 3.30 yeah. to, yeah, let's say, for an hour and a half. That's good for me. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Yeah, that's Thursday, right? Yeah. yeah. Thursday. Does that work for you? Thursday, yeah. Or is that best? Thursday, yeah. That's a bad one. Oh, that's, that's a, a bad, bad. Never mind. Sorry. Misunderstood. Yeah, the whole thing's Friday. So Friday, Friday the 14th. Friday. So Friday, then do you want to do, do you get a lunch hour at all? No. I just... Yeah, no, I, I don't really have all the things. Got to get money. Oh, okay. <laughs> Try to sell. So when you need that for you, what about Tuesday the 12th during the day? No, uh, Friday's, Tuesday, uh, Friday's fine. Okay. Yeah, Friday's fine. All right. Fine. Just trying to flex. Me, flex. Oh, it's just later the better. because I The later the better. But, but I'm fine yeah. doing the one o'clock if that works. Two one o'clock. Because we may, I don't know if we have our knitting group that day, but if we do, it's from 2 to 3 30. I mean, I have no problem having the public meeting. I just don't want to interfere with yeah. what they're doing. Um, or projects. Is it the 15th or no? No. Oh, okay. Thank right. you. I appreciate that. <laughs> Thanks when everybody else has schedule memorized. Sometimes we have too many things going on and I can't keep track. Oh. Thanks, Carol. Monday to Monday to. Monday to. Okay. But realistically, I'm, I'm blocking out okay. to 2.30. Yeah, okay. it'll, it'll go over. Okay, yeah. well, that's good. Okay. So, your homework then between now and then is basically to look, look at the consortium stuff. Should have that last time. We should have that all last time. Yeah, yeah. if you need to read some more, I can. Okay, yeah. cool. Uh, all right, well, I'm going to motion. Motion to adjourn. So moved. All right. Thank you. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Linda's aye. Aye. Thank you.